Hello everyone! In this video, we will learn all about the Intermediate Value and the Extreme Value Theorems. The Intermediate Value Theorem states that if a function is continuous over a closed interval a, b, then for every value m between f of a and f of b, there is a value of c which is within the interval from a to b and such that f of c is equal to m. So take note, f of x is continuous with the closed interval from a to b. f of a is equivalent to y, which is the first end point, while f of b is equal to y sub 2, which is the second end point of the interval. Now, considering the function f of x is equal to 2x minus 5 with the interval from 1 until 5. Take note, this is the graph of 2x minus 5 with the interval from positive 1 until positive 5. Now, take note, if our x is positive 1, the value for y is negative 3 or we can simply substitute in the given function. Another, if our x is 5, the value for y is also 5. Now, choosing m as 3 or y as 3, so by intermediate value theorem, there should be a value of c which is between 1 until 5. So with this, let's solve. So we have here 2c minus 5 is equal to 3, which is our identified value for y. Transferring negative 5 to the other side, so that would become 8. Dividing both sides by 2, so the value for C is 4. Indeed, 4 is within the interval 1 until 5. So again, if our Y is 3, the corresponding X there is 4, which is within the given interval. Okay, another. Now, considering the function f of x is equal to x squared with the interval from negative 4 until positive 2. So, this is our graph from negative 4 until positive 2. So, with this, with a graph, if our x is negative 4, the value for y is positive 16. If our x is positive 2, the value for y is positive 4. Now, choosing m as our value with 9, so by IVT, there should be a value of c which is within negative 4 until positive 2. So with this, c squared is equal to 9. So solving for c, getting the square to both sides, so our c here will be positive and negative 3. So take note with this, we will only consider negative 3. Why? Because negative 3 is within negative 4 and positive 2. But 3 is not considered as a solution to the specified interval because again, the value for x ends at positive 2. So take note of this. Okay, another. Consider the function f of x is equal to x cubed minus 4x squared plus x plus 7 over the interval from negative 1.5 until 4. Now take note with this, if our x is negative 1.5, the value for y is negative 6.875. If our x is positive 4, the value for y is positive 11. Now choosing m as 1. By IVT, there should exist a value of C, which is within negative 1.5 until positive 4. So with this, we'll have C cubed minus 4C squared plus C plus 7 is equal to 1. So with this, we can easily identify the values here because as given as Y is equal to 1, we can identify or transferring 1 to the other side, so 7 minus 1, that would become 6. So as y here is equivalent to 1, so take note, the endpoints here at negative 1, at positive 2, and at positive 3. So with this, we can rewrite the functions here in interval form as c 
plus 1 multiplied by C minus 2 multiplied by C minus 3 is equal to 0. So with this, simplifying our C here, our negative 1, positive 2, and positive 3, in which all of this are values within negative 1.5 until 4. So, take note of this one. Now, given f of x as x squared plus 3 with the interval from negative 3 and 1 and m of 7, what values of c will satisfy the IVT for the given function? Now, take note, x squared plus 3 is given here as 7. Transferring 3 to the other side, so x squared here is 4. Getting the square to both sides, so the value for x here are positive and negative 2. Now take note, the specified interval is negative 3 until positive 1. So in this case, we will only consider negative 2 as a function or a solution of the given function. So take note of that. Now, take note, are the following values of x within the given interval? What about 4? The answer is no. Take note, it is until 1 only. What about negative 1? It's a yes. 0 is a yes. Positive 3 is a no. And positive 1 is a yes. Because take note, it is a closed interval. So take note of that. Now, what values of c, if any, will satisfy the IVT for the given function and the given value of m on the interval a, b? So for example, f of x here is x squared minus 1, our m here is 2, and the interval is negative 1 until positive 2. So take note with this, x squared minus 1 is equal to positive 2. Transferring 1 to the other side, that would become 3. So getting the square to both sides, so that would be x is equal to positive and negative square root of 3. In this case, the value for c here, or x, is only positive square root of 3. Because again, square root of 3 is within negative 1 and positive 2. But negative square root of 3 is outside the interval. Next, f of x is equal to x squared minus 1, our m is 2, but this time the interval is from negative 1 until positive 1. So again, x squared minus 1 is equal to 2, transfer 1 to the other side, that would become 3, getting the square to both sides. So take note, the value for x here is positive and negative square root of 3. But take note with this one. Our solution to this is actually none. Why? Because positive and negative square root of 3, it is outside the specified interval. So take note of that. Another. x cubed plus 2, that's the function. The value for m is 3. And the interval here is from 0 until 3. So with this, x cubed plus 2 is again equal to 3, transfer 2 to the other side, that would become 1. Now, getting the cube root of 1, our result here is 1. So take note, 1 is also within 0 until 3. So 1 is a solution to this function. Next. This one, the function is sine x. Our value for m is 1 half, and the specified interval is from negative pi until positive pi, or that's negative 180 until positive 180. So with this, sine x is equal to 1 half, solving for x, so that would become arc sine 1 half. So making use of your calculators, the value for x here is pi over 6, or this is 30 degrees. And take note, Pi over 6 is within the given interval. So with this, this is a solution to the given function. So take note of that. The extreme value theorem. The extreme value theorem states that if a function is continuous over a closed interval from A to B, then f of x is guaranteed to reach a maximum and a minimum on AB. So when you say extreme value of f, or that's extremum, 
it's either a minimum or a maximum value of a function. Now, a minimum value occurs if f of c is lesser than or equal to f of x, while a maximum value occurs if f of c is greater than or equal to f of x. Now, let's have an example. Now, this is a graph of negative 2x4 plus 4x squared over the closed interval from negative 1 until 1. Now, given a graph, it's easier to identify the extreme points. Now, our highest points here are located at negative 1, positive 2, and positive 1, positive 2. While the lowest point or the minimum, it's located at 0, 0. Okay, another example. Now, given this, this is a graph of 2x minus 5 from the interval like 1 until 5. So, with this, our maximum point is located at 5, 5, while the minimum point is located at 1, negative 3. Okay, another example. Now, given this graph of x squared from the interval negative 4 until positive 2. So, the maximum point here is located at negative 4, 16. Well, the minimum point is located at 0, 0. So, take note of that. Okay, another example. Now, this is a graph of 2x4 minus 8x squared. Now, given the closed interval from negative 2 until negative square root of 2, so it's here. So our maximum point, it's located at negative 2, 0. The minimum point, it's located at negative 8, negative square root of 2, and negative 8. Now, the same graph, but this time, from negative 2 until negative 1. So it's here. So our maximum point, it's located at negative 2, 0. The minimum point, it's located at negative 2, square root of 2, negative 8. A. Now, still using the same graph, but this time our interval will start from negative 1.5 until positive 1. So it's here. So with this, our minimum point, it's still located at negative square root of 2, negative 8, while the maximum point, it's located at 0, 0. So next. This time, the interval from negative 2 until positive 2. Now, with this, our maximum points are located at three different points. It is negative 2, 0. It is 2, 0. And, of course, 0, 0. Well, the minimum points are located at negative square root of 2, negative 8, and positive square root of 2, negative so take note of that so maximum it's the highest point while the minimum is the lowest point okay now given this graph of sine and cosine x so take note the dotted line here or graph this is for sine well the thick one this is for cosine. Now, take note for sine, the interval is starting from negative 3 pi over 2. So, start here until 0. So, until here. So, with this, our minimum point is located at negative pi over 2, negative 1. Negative 1 here is our lower amplitude. While our maximum point, it's supposed to be located at negative 3 pi over 2, positive 1. But take note, it is none here because our interval here, it is open. It is parenthesis. So, negative 3 pi over 2 is actually not part of the given interval. So, that's why it is none. Next, now for cosine x, for the thicker graph, it will start from negative 2 pi until 0. So, our minimum point here, it's located at negative pi, negative 1. While the maximum points are located at negative 2 pi, 1, and 0, 1. So, take note here, 
For the second given, it is already bracket. So, the endpoints here are included. So, take note of that. Parenthesis and bracket, it will spell a difference. So, take note. Now, it's easier to identify the maximum and the minimum point if a graph is given. But if a graph is not given, then you really have to solve for it. So, given this, f of f of x is equal to x squared plus 3 with the interval from negative 3 until positive 2. Identify the minimum and the maximum value. So, take note, the interval starts from negative 3 until positive 2. So, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1 until positive 2. Next, our extreme points here, our end points here are closed. So, it is closed because it is bracket. So, with this, if our x is negative 3, the value for y here is 12. So, negative 3 squared, it's 9 plus 3, that would be 12. If it's negative 2 squared, 4 plus 3, that would be 7. Now, substituting the rest of the values for x, we will get this value. So take note here, the highest value for our y is located at 12, while the lowest value is located at 3. So with this, our minimum point, it's located at 0, 3, while the maximum point, it's located at negative 3, positive 12. So take note, that's how are you going to do it. Okay, another example. Now, given this, x squared minus 1 with the interval from negative 1 until positive 2. So, making use of our TOV, so negative 1, 0, 1 until 2. Now, take note, it is parenthesis. So, therefore, our endpoints here, it's open and it is also open in the other side. So, with this, if our x is negative 1, so negative 1 squared, Minus 1, that would be 0. If it's 0, this will be negative 1. If it's 1, it will be 0. And if it's 2, this would become 3. So take note here. The highest value is located at 2, 3. While the lowest value is located at 0, negative 1. So our minimum is 0, negative 1. While the maximum is located at none so why none because supposedly it should be two three but take note it is open so it is excluded so take note of that okay another now this one x cubed minus three x squared plus three x minus one with the interval from negative one until one so again negative one zero and one and take note it is parenthesis so therefore it is open so, if our x is negative 1, so substitute here, so that would become negative 8. If our x is 0, so this would be negative 1. And if our x is positive 1, so it is 0. So, with this, the minimum, it's supposed to be negative 1, negative 8, but take note it is open, so that's why it is none. The maximum, it's supposed to be 0, but take note it is open, so our maximum here is none. So, take note of this one. Okay, so that would be all about intermediate value theorem and extreme value.